Rest assured, no flies were harmed in the making of this movie. But prepare yourself, because it might make you feel a little squeamish. Uh oh, look at this, everybody. Oh. 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 <laughs> okay, well that was that was I think it's a girl. It's a girl! It's a girl! Congratulations. Oh cigars. My name is Mark Moffat. I've often been called Dr. Bugs because I'm an ecologist that goes around the world looking for new species and behavior, usually of little things, and this is one of the least appealing of my finds. It's what you've just seen is a video of a botfly maggot emerging from my hand, and that maggot had entered my flesh ten weeks ago in Belize. It turns out that the mother of the maggot isn't foolish enough to land directly on a human being and get swatted for it. She lays her egg instead on a mosquito, which buzzes around and in this case found my hand and must have been sipping some blood when the heat of my body caused the egg to fall off and the minute baby maggot hatched out and burrowed unseen into my skin. And over the next days, a little swelling formed with a perfectly round pore on top through which the maggot breathed. But what can I tell you? I'm a supporter of biodiversity. I didn't want to kill it. You can't easily remove bot flies. You simply cover over their breathing hole so that they can't breathe, say with some meat or even Vaseline, and they come out in a few hours. I didn't do that. It grew and it grew. And sadly, one day I thought I had accidentally killed it. And I went to a skin doctor thinking she was going to remove a festering corpse from my flesh. The doctor was thrilled. She'd never heard of such a thing. Maybe it was still alive in there. All of her assistants gathered around as she scalpeled in. And she couldn't find it. She couldn't find anything. I can only surmise that it had some side corridor in which it hid. About ten days ago, it cut a bigger portal through which I could see its little face looking out at me. And it would feast on my flesh and blood would well out. It would twist around and the spines on its body would give me little electric shocks. And it would come to the surface on occasion to breathe. And then on Friday, I went to Harvard University and it became more emboldened. In fact, it seemed to peer out and watch intently as E.O. Wilson, Ed Wilson, the father of biodiversity studies, talked about the value of all living things. And it's at the end of that meeting that it made its move. I steadied my hand. I could tell it was no longer frightened easily. And it billowed forth bigger than you might expect and fell plop to the ground. At least it probably hoped it was a ground. It turned out to be a formica table, but we rescued it and put it where it belongs in some soil where it's going to pupate and hopefully in a few weeks turn into an adult fly, which I can put in the collection with my name on it. Now this is the second bot fly that I've reared to maturity. The first one was when I was a graduate student. That one was in the top of my head. So I can proudly say that I've come closer to experiencing the miracle of giving birth than just about any other male human being.